Recycling of electronic devices. Waste electrical and electronic equipment, WEE, has grown significantly on the global level in the last 40 years, but especially in the last decade, WEE has the highest increase compared to other types of waste. Due to this, sustainable business practices and efficient recycling of electronic waste is crucial. Recycling presents a great challenge for today's society. Contrary to established recycling processes for metal waste recycling of electronic devices at the end of their lifetime is much more complex. Electronic devices contain many sorts of materials which are interconnected and difficult to separate. Efficient WEE does not only depend on the recycling industry which often experiences doubts on the suitability of recycling environments and devices. For efficient WEE it is also important that the user and device dealers who are often poorly informed on recycling, environment protection, use of energy and materials. Within the WEE research, some components in electronic devices contain dangerous substances such as mercury and cadmium. Both substances are dangerous for the environment, if not handled and removed correctly. Some products contain valuable materials that can be returned to the production cycle to be processed again. Control over large and even growing quantities of e-waste, recycling and processing of materials for reuse are the key questions from the ecological, as well as the economic perspective. Nevertheless, today even in industrialized countries only a small percentage of e-waste is recycled depending on the product category. Most of the discarded devices end in a landfill or are burned. Recycling of WEE can be profitable if the materials in the devices can be recovered during this process. Nevertheless, there are still great differences between products, and the economic value of waste is heavily dependent on the sort of waste that needs to be recycled. Due to this, recycling of mobile phones can be much more profitable than recycling a hair dryer that contains less precious materials that can be recycled. As already mentioned, e-waste contains relatively large quantities of precious materials, such as iron, aluminum, and copper. These materials can be recycled and reused in new products. E-waste contains precious metals that have a number of uses in electronic devices as contacts. They also contain special materials, such as indium, gallium and rare earths. Often these materials are only present in very small quantities. For example, in a mobile phone, the total amount of these materials is approximately 0,15% of the total mass. A small percentage of content makes the recycling and reuse difficult. The recycling processes need to be economically sustainable, meaning that the separation and processing of different materials are only done if the materials can be profitably sold as secondary materials for reuse in new products. The driving force for processing of secondary metals and development of new recycling technologies are the increasing prices and limited availability of materials, for example, rare earths. Some components of electronic devices contain hazardous substances that can be harmful to the environment if processed and disposed inadequately. The studies show that most mercury and cadmium in the landfills in the USA and EU come from e-waste. Although these substances are not used in most modern electronic products, the outdated products can still pollute the environment after their lifetime if disposed at inadequate landfills. Uncontrolled processing of e-waste such as incineration outside can also cause negative effects to the environment and people who are directly or indirectly in contact with the incinerator. All electronic and electrical equipment that is on the market will be over time outdated and will need to be recycled. With this, we can save unused resources and use materials that were already in use. The recycling process can also save energy. To slow down the increase of e-waste, the main principles in e-waste management are Reduce the number of devices, fewer products on the market and the current ones need to be maintained. Device reuse, by donating or selling we can give the device for reuse. Recycling, products that are not functioning or useful. Image presents different possibilities for a typical electronic device when it has reached the end of the life cycle. In each of the options are also possible bad practices that are related to the following facts. 
For example, recycling at the end of lifetime can be executed in a correct or incorrect manner. During product's lifetime, several users can use the product that could go through a phase of upgrade or repair. The product can be sold directly from the user to the user or through different mediums. But many discarded electronic devices, especially small sized ones, for example, mobile phones, laptops and consumer electronics stay at home as spare devices in case of breakdown, for memories, or as the consumer overestimate the real value of the products and do not recycle it. With today's growing technology, the electronic products are quickly losing their value. Recycling of Electronic Components The end of product's life cycle can be divided into several sub-processes which are intended to recover the used materials and energy. Optimization of the whole recycling process chain is key for achieving efficient recycling for the environment, as well as for the economy. This means that all steps of the recycling approach need to be considered because they are interconnected and interdependent. The efficiency of e-waste recycling does not only depend on the technical capacities, but also on other factors. There are challenges related to the politics, legislation, economy, society, and culture. One of the main obstacles in recycling is still the lack of consumer awareness on possibilities for recycling electronic waste and their positive impact on the environment and creation of a society that is focused on sustainable development. The obvious lack of awareness can be seen in the low rate of collected discarded electronic products. The last studies in Europe show that only 10% of electronic devices is returned to the recycling process. At the end of product's life cycle, the recycling process can be divided into three phases that need different management methods and different technical approach. The first step is collection and consolidation of waste, called take back. This is mainly a logistic challenge that requires a high level of awareness and consumer's readiness to return outdated electronic devices for recycling. In the second step before waste processing, the waste is taken over by specialized recycling companies. Those sort the devices according to the device type. For example, separately are sorted computer monitors, television sets, audio devices, personal computers, portable devices, such as mobile phones, laptops, and tablets, printers, household appliances, etc. The sorting is also done by the built-in materials in the device. This process of separating is done before the devices go in the recycling process. Materials that cannot be recycled are used for generating energy at incineration or are finally discarded at a landfill. Each step is a smaller side stream that cannot be further processed. Depending on the electronic device type and its composition it depends how difficult the recycling process is. Efficient achieving of the second and third recycling phase depends on the device itself. Therefore, it is important that each product or device type has a prepared recycling plan. The second recycling phase includes manual disassembling of the device and mechanical or chemical processing. The third recycling phase presents the return of the processed materials back to the market. The first phase of waste collection is organized at a local level. An important role have local communities, local politics, and organizations for environment protection. The second phase is also done at the local or regional level, depending on the availability of recycling capacities and companies. A part of the third step usually includes special techniques that are usually organized at national or international level. One example is refining of precious metals or metals from rare earth materials that need complex and more expensive processing for recycling.